We're building a new aluminum expedition sailboat, and over the last 12 months, we've been documenting the hull construction, as well as systems designed for the hybrid electric diesel drive system. Check out the build series here if you missed any videos, and add a comment below if you have any additional topics you're interested in. This time on Distant Shores, we go into depth on lithium batteries, planning out the boat's energy storage system, and touring the Super B battery factory, where we learn how marine lithium batteries are manufactured. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Our new boat has been designed from the start to have a hybrid electric drive system with a 15 kilowatt electric motor, as well as a standard diesel engine for propulsion. This means we will need a high energy capacity to give us a meaningful range in electric mode. Electrical energy is measured in kilowatt hours. Think about kilowatt hours as equivalent to how much fuel you carry in the tank, and I calculated we need about 30 kilowatt hours. I estimate this would give us two hours at full speed in electric mode, roughly five and a half knots, or for longer range, six hours at roughly three and a half knots. A 30 kilowatt hour lithium battery bank will likely weigh more than 200 kilograms. So for stability, it will be best to have the batteries located low in the boat. We've been looking at battery manufacturers who build a high quality marine battery that will allow us to fit the large capacity and reliable battery bank we'll need, and heard about a Netherlands based company about two hours from Mackham called Super B. So as you see, we've got four main production lines. It starts with the starter line, which is uh, uh, actually the product we started with as Super B for starting engines. Those are relatively small batteries. With a 25 amp hour starter battery, we can produce 1000 amps on starting current. So very high peaks, but not suitable for, uh, let's say, energy, energy usage, long term energy consumption. Roy shows us the building block for their first production starting battery, a 26650 cell, meaning 26 mm diameter, 65 mm length cylindrical cell, producing 3.2 volts. Each lithium iron phosphate cell, that's how you can recognize it, is always nominal voltage 3.2 volts. Uh, put four in series, then you have a 12.8 volt, say 12 volt battery. All the batteries here at Super B are based on the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Lithium iron phosphate, or lithium ferrophosphate, is written LIFEPO4 for the LI for lithium, FE for ferro, and PO4 for phosphate. There's also a small, our smallest battery, a, a 2.5 amp hour starting battery, it's like this size. Um, and that is used for starting like 250cc motorcycle engines. Completely different than of course the energy batteries, uh, where there is much more electronics inside. For boat batteries, our main goal is maximum energy storage. Here we, see, we use different types of cell. This is what we call a prismatic shaped cell, this blue one. Again, lithium iron phosphate, so one of these blue things is 3.2 volts. In this battery we have two in seri oh, sorry, four in series and two in parallel. With four cells in series, we get a battery voltage of 12.8 volts. And if we want to double the energy available, we can add four more series cells, but connect them in parallel, where the voltage remains 12.8, but the energy in the current doubles. Uh, and this entire battery is 340 amp hours. Oh wow, yeah. And here you can again see we do not screw cells like many uh, competitors, but we weld the cells together because we think welding is a far better connection than screwing, especially over time. The advantage of prismatic over cylindrical is that you can achieve a higher energy density level than with cylindrical, because cylindrical there's still quite some air in between. Uh, here you can again see the, the type of weld we do. It's not a spot weld, but it really makes a complete circle. Also again to reduce the resistance within the battery. If we design a battery, that's always a good example. We try to keep everything around the cell, should stay cooler than the cell itself. 
when you discharge or charge the battery. So nothing like cables or bus bars is allowed to heat up the cells. So meaning we use quite thick materials to, uh, to connect. And one example is, for example, this type of bolt you see here. It's not just a bolt. It's CNC phrased again to be completely flat. And then the material used here. This, oh, is this face is specially machined. Exactly. I so see. it's entirely flat. If you can see, normally a bolt is like curved, but this is entirely flat. And then this material here is aluminum, but it's tin plated aluminum. Tin is a soft material, so when you press the bolt, yeah. it presses inside the material and then you have perfect connection. Yeah. Wow. Now each and every component is labeled. Like here you have these, these, these barcodes. It's on, the, it's on the cell, it's on uh, uh, the cabling, it's on the entire BMS. And every component is scanned and tracked into the system. So afterwards, you can always see if there's a, like a, a default in the field. We can trace back, okay, which is the badge and did we see that more often in this badge? So we know there's a problem. Okay. Um, also, it's also checking uh, this guy that's making the battery that he actually had training to make this battery. So he should lock into the system before he can actually produce the battery. Oh, I see. So it, you can tra trace even that. Fully traceable. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Clearly, safety and quality control is a priority at Super B batteries. So that's actually the largest battery we produce, 12 volt, 340 amp hours. And there you can also see the, the development which we made in the past couple of years because we started in that same uh, battery uh, casing with 160 amp hours. That was six years ago and now we're 340. You see again the two cells, prismatic cells again actually put on the side so it fits perfectly in this casing uh, four cells that means uh, to make a 12 volt battery these are all in series is this the inside of the what's inside the nomada then this that, yeah that's the configuration yeah it's much? put like this it puts into the battery and everything is computer controlled like this one this device it knows exactly, okay, I am no, I'm now having this type of screw and I need to tighten it with so many newton meters to reduce all kinds of errors in the field, right? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I do it. Please, Johan, <laughs> please. This style of battery is what we're planning for our boat, so we're interested to watch one made. First, sealant adhesive is put in to secure the cells and prevent vibration. Next, an assembly of two cells is set in one end of the case and then the other. These four cells, each with 3.2 volts, will make up the 12.8 volt battery. The upper assembly comes next, securing the cells in place and connecting the cells to handle the heavy current flowing from the battery. I always find it interesting, this is only the top side, but the back side, you see how thick this is. Because you can discharge this 105 amp hour with 315 amps, so then you need to have these kind of thick materials. And of course, that's also what makes Super B a little bit more expensive, that we use those kind of thick materials. Yes, it's an expensive material, but we really think it makes a better battery. I see. Yes, it looks very... Yeah, all CNC phrased, very thick aluminum. Uh, yeah. That's aluminum. Yeah. yeah. This jig holds the battery case in perfect shape while the upper components are added. So that's the that's the shunt. The shunt. Oh, okay. So you know how much current is yeah. floating within the battery. The yeah. The shunt monitors the energy that flows in and out of a battery. In this case, having the shunt right inside the battery allows the battery to monitor itself, measuring the real-time current draw as well as the battery voltage. Yeah. But you can also see uh, this is uh, these are the temperature sensors, so we measure the temperature of each individual cell. So there's four this is yeah, four in total. four cells. So we're scanning in the job that we're doing now? Yeah, and also to trace okay uh, this this part then belongs to the uh, this you need to scan the BMS that comes on top here. So we need to make sure, okay, this cell pack with these components matches with that BMS. 
The BMS, Battery Management System, is an electronic system that manages the battery pack, protecting the battery from operating outside its safe operating zone, monitoring its state, balancing the individual cells and telling the charger when to turn off. Finally, the top cover can be put on, sealing the battery to its waterproof IP66 standard. Then it's ready to be put on the test stand, where each individual battery is run through testing and a couple of cycles, again checked by the scan code. This is finished. One. This gone. <laughs> yep, this one. Oh, so now it's going on to a test jig, or a test stand. So all that is automatically being calculated if it's okay. And it does some... Uh some cycles, eh? you see here for example as well, it sees the voltage is on different cells and you immediately do the balancing here, so we also we charge it to 100%, so it's charged up to 100% before it goes in the warehouse and when it's shipped from the warehouse to the customer before we hook it up very quickly again to make sure that when it arrives at the customer it's perfectly charged and ready for use and balanced, yeah. And you see yeah, those are already finished and since passed. And of course, all that information is also again stored in the system that uh, when uh, an error happens in the field, we can see, hey, did this actually pass the test and uh, were there any strange data to be found? So these are the bus connections? Yeah, this orange cable. Yeah. yeah. No matter has a different kind of... No, it's the same type of connector. It only has three um, because that's a battery we use in a larger system, so you want to wire it through which is why we have three here. This we have to use only one, meaning if you want to connect to another one, you have to use a splitter in between. And that one you can simply wire through. And a third connector is uh, required by uh, DNV, which is a maritime commercial type approval. And um, that required a BMS independent temperature sensor. So suppose all temperature sensors on the entire BMS would fail. The third connector is a additional temperature sensor because DNV thinks temperature is very crucial on, on board of ships and it's the, the one thing um, to keep it under control and most important thing to keep it under control uh, so even if the BMS would fail that, and the temperature would run too high it would spit out uh, a temperature warning. I hadn't heard of this additional safety feature before. This battery has already got four temperature sensors connected to the battery management system, one for each individual cell. But then, for even more safety, there's an extra temperature sensor set up independent of the BMS. DNV is a maritime type approval for commercial ships. So if you want to install lithium batteries for commercial purpose on a ship, you need to fulfill certain type approvals. And DNV is one for offshore usage. If you want to use batteries on a commercial basis offshore, you need to have DNV type approval. And it's quite a tough to go through that process, and, uh, but the Nimada battery has the DNV type approval. Okay, do most batteries have that? No. No. There are only very few batteries that have the DNV type approval. And it's, uh, uh, like for example, Batteries imported from China almost never have DNV type approval because they cannot meet those tough criteria. So you do not need it, but at least you, uh, it's a safe battery because DNV says also it's a, a good battery to use. DNV stands for Det Norske Veritas, a standards organization started way back in the mid-1800s that has now created a standard specifically for marine lithium batteries. But it's recognized all over the world. The design was, if you put them yeah, like so, you use the bus bar, you put them now in parallel, and if you put this the other way around, then you have them in series. Uh, if you have a luxury yacht, and you're in the middle of the ocean, you want to be able to trust on your batteries, right? I think you're of any kind of yacht and you're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, especially for propulsion. I wanted to show you uh, here you see also the BMS and here you see the uh, 
Although they, I never know which one it is. It's some the, beautiful engineering. The balancing resistors. So what happens is, <coughs> let's say here you have uh, in total eight cells in the battery, right? If seven of the eight cells have reached 3.55 volts, it says, okay, I am full. That one cell that still needs the current is, for example, at 3.45. What happens is these balance resistors will convert the current flowing into the BMS. It converts the current into heat. And that only that one cell that's not reached 3.55 volts yet, it will still receive the current. That's how basically the balancing works. And then the BMS communicates with the charger via the CAN network. Until all the batteries are full, it will command the charge, okay, you can now stop charging. And that's why the communicating with the charger is important. Because it will also say to the charger, when the battery is at 50%, it will ask the full charge current. When the battery is already uh, almost full, it will say to the charger, I now want to get only like 2 amps. And the charger then needs to provide, but, uh, it, it needs to know. Mm. So that's why you want to have proper communication. These Nomada batteries by Super B are designed for large systems and they can be configured to scale up to our planned energy capacity of 30 kilowatt hours. Each battery has a capacity of 1.34 kilowatt hours at 12 volts. Since we need a 48 volt system, we will make up each bank from four batteries in series for a total of 5.3 kilowatt hours. Then when we add five more banks in parallel, we stay at 48 volts but add energy to get a total of 32 kilowatt hours. The final factor for us will be finding space for the batteries, ideally keeping the weight low down. As always, thanks for watching and for your comments. We read every one and it's great to have you along on the adventure. And if you want to be even more involved, consider joining our Patreon group, where we have regular get-togethers, Q&As, tutorials, real-time updates, and more. It's a really nice community, and membership helps support the production of Distant Shores videos. We invite you to check it out, and look forward to welcoming you. <laughs>